Alright guys, this video is to help you go through how to do a t-test in Excel. So what I've already done here is divided um, height between females and males. That's the example that I used in class. Um, if you need a refresher on how to sort your data and divide into females and males, um, you can refer to the last video we posted. Um, so again, I already have this set up. I have uh, the height for females in one column, the height for males in another column. And I've also typed in all the information that we're going to need to do a t-test down here. Um, so let's start off and compute the means for both groups. So remember the function for mean is equals average. And we can select our data. And then again, we don't have to type in that formula. We can simply uh, go to the bottom right-hand corner of that box, find the plus sign, drag it over, and we get the means for our male group. And we can do the same thing with standard deviation. So equals STDEV. Again, select your data. And then drag that over. So now we have means and standard deviations for both groups. Should be a review from last time. Um, now, if we want to compute sample size for both groups, which we will need, um, first you could just look and count how many cells you have. So we started in cell 2, down to cell 117. Um, but if you ever have a data set where it's not as quite as easy to count, um, there is a simple function you can use, and that function is just equals count, C-O-U-N-T, open parentheses, same thing, select your data, then all that does is count the number of cells that have data in the um, area that you've selected. And you can see in this case, uh, even though we selected more than uh, the number of cells that have data, it'll throw out all the cells that don't have data. So we have 116 females and 61 males. And um, one other piece of information we'll need that we uh, will calculate now since it's related to sample size is degrees of freedom. Um, and degrees of freedom, it's a very simple calculation. Um, just type in equals, and then you take the number of samples in each group. So here you can just click on uh, the cell that has your sample size for the first group, and we're going to subtract one. And we're going to add that to the number of samples in our second group, minus 1. So in this case, our degrees of freedom is 175. Now there are two ways to do a t-test in Excel. Uh, as I told my sections, there's an easy way and a hard way. Um, so I'm going to show you guys the easy way right now. Um, first, and then I will show you the harder way, and both will tell you the exact same uh, end piece of information. It's just two different ways of two different calculations to get the same end result. Um, so the first way is to compute a p-value and compare that to our alpha level. So as Andy talked about in lecture and almost all scientific research, our our alpha level is going to be set at 0.05. And to compute our p-value, we are going to type in equals, and there is a uh, function in Excel that will compute a p-value. That function is equals t-test. So we'll type in equals t-test, open parentheses, and it's going to ask for four pieces of information. Uh, the first two is simply that it needs the data for both groups where it says array 1 and array 2. So for array 1, same thing that we've been doing. We're going to select all of our data and then put a comma and then select our second group of data and then comma. So we have array 1, comma, array 2, comma. Now it's going to ask if we want to do a one-tailed or two-tailed test. Um, in almost all, but not quite all, scientific literature, uh, you'll see that we'll use a two-tailed test. Um, and that is a stronger test. 
Um, when you do a two-tail test, your alternative hypothesis is that the means um, between both groups will be different. Whereas if you do a one-tail test, your alternative hypothesis is that one mean will be greater than or less than another mean. So a one-tail test is a unidirectional test, whereas a two-tail test is a bidirectional test. So it doesn't just test greater than or less than, it tests um, whether the two means are different regardless of direction. So we're going to want to do a two-tailed test, and in order to say we want to do a two-tailed test, we just have to type in two, and then comma, and now it's going to ask if we want to do a paired or unpaired test. Remember, a paired test would be if we were testing the same group of people twice at two different time points. Um, that's not the case here. We're testing two different groups, males versus females. Um, so it's going to be an unpaired test, and for an unpaired test, we have... Uh, two options here. We have um, we have uh, whether uh, we have equal variance or unequal variance. Um, and there are uh, there's another test you can run to see if you have equal or unequal variance. Uh, but we don't worry about that in this class. Uh, we're always going to assume that the variance is equal. So we're always going to type in if it's an unpaired test. We're going to type in two. For an unpaired test, and then close parentheses, enter, and you see here we get a very, very low number 1.8 times 10 to the negative 16th, which means 0 0.00000, bunch of zeros, um, 0.18. So, the easy way to do a t test and determine phi of significance is to just compare your p value to your alpha level. If your p-value is less than your alpha, then you have significance, and you can conclude that your two groups are different. The means of two groups are different. So in this case, we can conclude that uh, the height for males is different than the height for females. Um, and if we're talking about our hypotheses, that means we can reject our null hypothesis. There is enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis and say that there is a difference in height between males and females. Um, so that's the easy way to do a t-test. Whenever you're doing a t-test for future classes, you can simply do um, that function and compare it to your alpha level, which will, again, generally be 0.05. Um, there's two other values, though, you can compute and compare to do a t-test. Um, and those are your critical value and your test statistic. So I'll show you guys how to compute those values now. Um, and you do need to do this also for your homework. So uh, for your critical value, you're going to type it equals, and the function for critical value is equals T-I-N-V. Open parentheses, and then it's going to ask for two pieces of information here. It's going to ask for your probability, which is uh, Excel's way of saying it wants your alpha level. So that's going to be 0 0.05. And then it's going to ask for degrees of freedom. So that's why we had to calculate degrees of freedom. Um, and we can just type in 175, or we can just click on the cell that has 175. Close parentheses, enter, and we get our critical value. Now for the test statistic. Um, that's a longer formula um, where we have the difference between the means and the numerator and the square root between, uh, in the denominator, it's the square root of standard deviation 1. Uh, square divided by n plus standard deviation 2 squared divided by n. Um, that's You can type that all into one cell. You'll have a lot of parentheses. Uh, it's easy to make a mistake doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compute a few pieces of information separately, and then I'm going to put it all together in one cell. So in order to compute the difference between means, that's pretty easy. Um, and we don't care about whether it's negative or positive. It's arbitrary, which means you subtract from which. So you can just say uh, equals ABS for absolute value of mean 1 minus mean 2. Press enter, and that's going to be our numerator. And then in the denominator, um, let's actually let's just compute um, the standard deviation squared divided by n for both groups. So in this case, it's going to be equals open parentheses. Standard deviation. Uh, squared is the caret key. It should be above your 6 key or on your 6 key. Squared. 
divided by your sample size n. Press enter. And then if you set it up just like I did, you don't have to do that again. Again, you can just drag it over and it'll square your other standard deviation and divide it by your sample size in your other group. So now we have uh, all the information that we need to compute our test statistic. So we can type in equals, difference between the means and the numerator, divided by, and we're actually going to want to type in square root, which is SQRT, and then open parentheses, and then it's going to be this number plus this number. We can press enter. And we get a test statistic that's very large, much bigger than our critical value. So our critical value is about 1.97. Our test statistic is about uh, 8.66. Um, and in this case, what you compare is, again, your test statistic to your critical value. And if your test statistic is greater than your critical value, you have significance. Um, and you're never going to have a case where comparing alpha level to p-value gives you one result and then comparing your test statistic to your critical value gives you the opposite result. They're always going to be the same. Uh, if your p-value is exactly right at 0.05, then your critical value is going to equal your test statistic as long as you did everything correctly. So in this case, again, our test statistic is greater than our critical value. So same thing, we conclude that there is a difference between means. Um, and so for your homework, what you'll need to do is do a t-test. Uh, again, for my classes, I use this as an example. So you cannot do um, height between males and females for your homework. Uh, but you'll need to compute the means for both groups, standard deviations for both groups, uh, your p-value, test statistic, and critical, uh, critical value for two different t-tests. Um, and in the next video, we will show you guys how to do an ANOVA, um, so stay tuned.